Welcome to the Chat Club Podcast, where you are not alone in your mental health journey. It's okay that you're not okay today. Where discussions on mental health challenges like anxiety, grief, interviews with people that deal with challenges in mental health. Also, discussions on positive coping mechanisms, positive motivation, self-help, a little hope, and thinking creatively. Remember, there's only one rule in Chat Club. Everybody talks about Chat Club. Take a seat, relax, and listen. Here is your host, Alan Hilchie. Hello, everyone. I'm Alan Hilchie. I'm here with Chat Club. I'm here with Mark Roberts, my guest today, and we're going to talk about some mental health. How you doing, Mark? Al, it's been a long time. Uh, the last time I saw you, I guess, in person was you were playing senior softball and I was interviewing you. And now what's happened these years later, you're interviewing me. Imagine that. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. So you're a successful radio host. You do a lot of good things for the community. And I guess we all talk about our breaking points in life and we talk about our mental health. So kind of give my audience a little bit of your journey. Well... Um, you know, I kind of work in a performance-based business, and uh, so there's always a little bit of pressure there, um, and sometimes, of course, people don't deal with that very well. Um, and so, I, I mean, I find that even even now, I, I, I have a certain amount of anxiety about, uh, you know, about failure, but I think that's normal. I think... Um, People who don't, who are in a, you know, like musicians or, or athletes or, you know, people who do what I do, if they don't admit to having some of those anxieties, they're probably not telling the truth, right? So, but, um, you know, I mean, I, I, uh, I've managed to kind of, you know, move on. I mean, this is my 40th year in radio. Uh, and, you know, it's what I wanted to do when I was 10, so... I'm, I'm I'm doing what I wanted to do when I was a kid, and not many people can say that. But, uh, you know, to, I think I certainly uh, have not had to consult anybody on, on, on any of it, but it's it's there. It's always there, right? Absolutely. It's not an easy thing when everyone looks at you, and it's almost like celebrities, like Robin Leonard's come out, Carrie Price has come out. All these, you know, hockey athletes have come out saying that they have mental health. Because they're almost looked upon as being perfect. Right. And we're not perfect. No. No. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I, uh, I guess, I don't know why, but I struggled with is, uh, is that quest for perfection. And I'm sure it's the same for those athletes you mentioned because, uh, I don't know if it's as if I think that it's going to be taken away from me, <laughs> you know. But I had these uh, not unrealistic Expectations, because I think you should always strive to be the best you can be, no matter what you do, right? Uh, you know, just uh, but cut yourself some slack. And earlier in my career, I I was very hard on myself. I'm still hard on myself in any anything I do, uh, sports or whatever. But but you got to cut yourself some slack. Nothing is perfect in life, and that's uh, you know, being in radio for forty years has taught me that. We're live on the air every morning, Fred and I. You know, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Sometimes you'll think later, gee, I wish I would have said that or or this or that. But, uh, you know, it's live radio and you just you just have to let it go. And I think, um, you know, people in business struggle with that. People in uh, certainly athletics, we talked about that. The entertainment industry and and people don't always uh, pick the right cures for their for their pressures. Right. Yeah. We've all been there. Right. Coping mechanisms. Yeah. So. You play music. Is that your kind of therapeutic way of getting out of the world and just kind of making yourself good? Sure. Uh, you know, uh, I think music, one of the, I always said one of the luckiest things I've done is play music with other human beings because it's a different kind of bond than, than anything. Um, and it, it can serve as that, uh, uh, like you say, like a getting away from, from from the daily grind or whatever, but it, you know it can also add to anxiety too. Absolutely, because you're still getting up on stage there, and I write my own songs. So you're you're putting your 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 children out there, your songs, and and you know a piece of yourself. You're letting go to the audience, and so you know again for me it's it's not a I don't find it a major impediment, but that anxiety level is always there. It's not that you're nervous. For me, it's more like I just can't wait to get it started. 
you yeah. know, anticipation. Just the waiting of the of the event, and so uh, you know, that's kind of that's kind of what I deal with. I find the older I get, it's it's not getting any better. So uh, you got to be a little bit nervous, I believe, to to succeed in in certain endeavors. Um, you know, I know you you're a former athlete. You go to the nationals in softball, you get your first at bat. You better be nervous. If you're not nervous, there's something wrong with you, right? Absolutely. Uh, same thing on going on stage. Not so much on the radio anymore. After 40 years of doing it, I don't feel uh, I don't feel nervous about it. I just uh, you know, it's just that excitement about about getting it going and and not wanting to wait the hour before we go on the air. But yeah. It, it's there's a lot of that. Music is a good one. Sports is a good one sometimes. Golf is not a good one. <laughs> I don't think it is for anyone. No, golf is not relaxing and doesn't do anything for my yeah. stress levels. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think you got to find that thing that makes you happy. And if it's absolutely doing nothing, then do nothing and mm -hmm. relax. Right, get away from it and uh, get away from the things that stress you out. You know, if you can. I uh, I know the last two years was very hard on on us. Um, you had to do your radio show from home. Yeah. Um, you're not seeing your office buddies. Yeah. You know, you're not hanging yeah. out with Freddie. How was that for you? That was pretty hard, I would imagine. It was very different. Um, I mean, there were pluses and minuses to it. It was uh, I didn't have to drive in any winter storms uh, last winter, but. Uh, it as, and you know so it's convenient that way, but it's also not what we do, right? It's not we don't exist in a bubble. So yeah. uh, you know, having to uh, do everything, him and I were on uh, were on uh, FaceTiming each other during the show and stuff. So it's very different that way. Um, but you know, it, 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 for me, it was as normal as it could be. For other people, not so much. I mean, for me, my shift was exactly the same. I had to put the same amount of prep into it. Six o'clock news goes at six. You know, as, as as much as the routine and the tasks, that didn't change a lot. Just the not seeing your coworkers. I mean, we've had uh, <clears throat> a lot of people leave in that time, either through retirement or just going to other jobs or the, their positions were they're no longer here so that's a little tough you know when you don't see your co-workers but uh but i you know it, it was strange and it wasn't ideal but uh you know you you adjust you adjust to things like that things aren't always going to be you know perfect in the environment you work in so um so coming back to you and freddie are both men so being in a partnership like being co-workers must must help with a lot of yeah I, I i call fred my my work husband because <laughs> 21 years we've been doing the morning show together you know so we know each other's you know ins and outs very very well so it's uh it's a comfort that way that we we've come to a point that um we never surprise rarely surprise each other as far as in a bad way you know in a good way yeah for sure so, so that's a that's a comfortable thing. Rather than you know doing it a solo show is a different animal altogether. It's just you and the the audience, and and you don't really get that immediate feedback in in radio sometimes. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's been it's been great working with Freddie for the last two decades, and of course he's uh, come through some challenges himself, having quit drinking in that time, and uh, you know a severe drinking problem, and. Uh, and he's the better for that. So, uh, yeah, we got a good thing going, and hopefully they'll let us continue <laughs> Yeah, well, for years to come. Yeah. I listen to you every morning going down the hand wall. I drive by down there. Awesome. So yeah. I enjoy you guys. You guys are very positive, a good team. So Yeah, we, uh, we're we thankful for the, the listeners we have, and especially the ones that have stayed with us for a long time. It's, uh, that loyalty is great. We really appreciate that. Yeah. So is there any other subjects you'd like to talk about, Mark? Well, um, just, I, you know, you've mentioned about men not talking about it. Yep. And I think, you know, we this station is owned by Bell, and Bell's very much in the Bell Let's Talk program. Um, so trying to get it out and about. And uh, the thing is, you, you never know what other people are going through. 
you don't know, you haven't walked a mile in their shoes. I hear, you know, people are very judgmental about others when they don't actually know the story. Yep. So you might want to keep that in mind sometimes that maybe someone's going through a little bit of a patch and you might want to cut him some slack that he's not, you know, doing exactly what you think he should be doing. I mean, we we don't know what goes on and men are the worst for it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely the worst for not telling anybody, right? And being a correctional officer is even worse because you're not supposed to show the feelings. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, of course, the reason you're doing this thing, I guess, is you've you've walked this road, right? Absolutely. And I just want to create a safe place for people. I want to create a safe place that they can come out and talk and they come out and reach like yourself that have struggled. And I want my guests to feel like they're giving part of their sharing their story but also they're sharing a similar story that someone else has. Right. And it gives them some calming effect that someone else is going through this. Because when you go through this sort of stuff, you're alone. You feel like you're alone. Yes. Uh, you don't want to be a burden on other people. You don't want to. And why I do the podcast is mostly for a safe place for people to express how they feel. I think it's important. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh you know, talking is, is the key. I've been very, very fortunate in, you know, uh, that I haven't gone to any dark places. Um, I, you know, doesn't mean there isn't, uh, there isn't stressors there in the daily life. So, I mean, for me, I, I don't consider myself having, having gone through the mental health issues the way people talk about them. However, there's always the same things that lead up to that, right? There's feelings of, you know, there's self-worth feelings, mm -hmm. uh, disappointment in yourself or feeling that you haven't uh, achieved your as much as you can achieve and all these things. Everybody, I think most of us, when we get to a certain age, have, have gone through that conversation in our own minds, right? And I have as well. But, as you know, I'm lucky in the fact that it hasn't gone to the point where it's dragged me down into a, into a dark place. So I feel fortunate in that. I know it's a fine line between, you know, where I've been there and where some people who go further down that, that rabbit hole, but it doesn't mean that we all don't have that in common. We all have the same sort of questions of ourselves. And I think that's, that's, it's not really outside things that, that cause mental health issues. I believe it's inside. And the external, the, yeah, and the external things just add to it, add more pressure to it. Like if you're going through uh, family troubles or, uh, you know, a breakup or you, you get let go from your job, all that's going to add to these mental issues, but it's not the root cause. The root yeah. cause is in, inside each one of us, right? So. Yeah. And, and that's what I talk about. Like, you got to love yourself. You got to look in the mirror and, Say, hey, you know, I love myself today, and this is why. And a lot of people can't look in the mirror, and they can't say those things. And it, it's it's hard, but... And, and that's why you kind of do these... Like, Bell does this, and other organizations, and you got a sis that does uh, suicide intervention. Yeah. Um, I'm actually a trainer. I did that this year, so... Good. Quite proud of myself for getting through that. But just to... And, for instance, my podcast is, is a safe place for people to hear that there was something. And I think that's important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know I make it my best effort when I go to a grocery store to make sure that if I, if I have eye contact with someone, I say hi. Because their eye contact, you know, their eye contact's on me for a reason. Yeah. Hi. And, you know, they smile and walk away. They could be having a real bad day looking for something. Right. So I kind of... I'm very mindful, like, this whole, my whole journey in corrections, sports, and I took some bad ribbons in, in sports. I had, uh, and I was always a bigger player. I was never that fit guy in his senior baseball in Moncton. I have never been more humili humiliated in my life about that. Really? Oh, yeah, it was yeah. bad. I didn't, the players you think would be worse, but the fans were worse. They'd have a sign up there saying, hey, I'll you the canteen's that way. Oh, Skins really? Is that yeah. Way. yeah. And you they, try to laugh it off, but obviously it hurts. Uh, over the time, yeah. I mean, every, every yeah. year. So I guess I want to get down to your coping mechanism. What do you do if you go down that hole? What support do you have 
that you built that you can look at? Well, like I say, you know, I consider myself very fortunate from uh, some of the people that may be listening to this or who have who have gone in a dark place because I, I have not uh, uh, gone to a debilitating uh, level. But, uh, you know, I, I always think of the, the guys that came back from the Second World War who never talked about what they saw over there, just came home, went to work, supported their families, all this, and very rarely talked about it. But, it, you know, and many of those guys faced their own demons, alcohol, abuse, and so on. And I always think of those guys, the tough guys, soldiers. Uh, and now we have support for those people. Back then, we didn't. You know, PTSD, you can imagine how many of those World War II veterans came back with that, and there was no such diagnosis as that and stuff. So so I think, you know, if you... The worst thing you can do is keep it to yourself. The worst thing you can do is 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 think it's just it's just you and it's just your brain working this way because it's not. It's not. We know that now. And uh, so you, you, I think you got to find that person that's going to help you. You know, you, you got to have those people in your lives. That one person you just call them up and you know have a chat and it, that and maybe that you don't even get into it, but just the fact that you had a phone conversation with that person has lifted your spirits, you know? So, uh, you know, I, I've been, like I say, I've been very fortunate, but, um, you know, I think we're all, we're all just on this, uh, on this ladder and it could change at any moment. Right. So, but, uh, I guess don't beat yourself up as much would be one of my pieces of advice. Always strive to be the best you can be, but realize there's no such thing as perfection. So don't even, don't even try with that. And, uh, uh, you know, that's about all I, I would say. Like you said, love yourself, you know, or at least like yourself, yeah. <laughs> you know. We have those days. Yeah, yeah. So uh, because, uh, I mean, uh, the fact of the matter is we think, and you said this, we think we're alone in whatever we're thinking, but I know. you're not alone. I mean, yeah, just look at the statistics of uh, how many people in Canada suffer some kind of, uh, you know, uh, mental issue and uh it's got a bad stigma me yeah. mental issue but it's not it, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be you know serious or or separate you from the population because i don't think that's the case i think we're all we're all in it together some of us uh obviously uh, face it worse than others and i would be one of the lucky ones so yeah um and i'd say i'm pretty lucky because i never went down the road where i thought i would take my own life and I'm very fortunate because in corrections, at one time or another, you're going to do that. And I, I guess I kind of build myself a little itinerary where I have the pros and cons. And my pros always outweigh my cons. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And I mean to strive, like, I strive to maintain my pros as much as possible. So, I mean, as far as for me, I have my days where, you know, I get up, I'm like, I don't want to go to work today. But I struggle through it. I look in the mirror, I shave, I get myself ready, go down to work, and as soon as I get down there, I'm very best. Yeah, and if we all have better days than, than others, right? And, uh, you know, the thing, the thing that I, uh, you know, I found out during my lifetime is uh, um, take a breath. Take a day or two, you know, uh, you go through something traumatic, a breakup or, uh, you know, someone close to you passes on, one of your relatives, you know, my parents, both gone now and uh, we'll never get over that. But, um, but you know, you just take a day or two and uh, things get better. Sun yeah. comes up the next day, right? It's not the worst thing ever. And, and things like relationships uh, separating and stuff is not uh, the it's not the end of the world, man. No, I'm prime suspect of that. I was separated there a couple of years ago, and it was a great chance. I took it as an opportunity to rebuild myself. There you go, there you go. So, anyway, uh, all uh, to everybody that's listening who may be suffering, all the best to you, and, and remember, you're not alone. Well, thanks very much for taking your time, Mark. Thanks, Al. Great to see you, man. All right, thank you so much for listening. This was number. 47 for episodes thank you so much for listening and thanks for your continued support as i continue to grow i continue to grow to six almost six thousand 
downloads and I've done a bit of promoting through other things that have increased it but how can you help me I will tell you how you can help me I would love if you could subscribe if you rate me and tell me how you like the episodes it's really important for other people to understand that there's actually listeners listening to the podcast and they're actually contributing saying I really like Hope and Little Things or My Happy Places or any other episodes that I have done. I would really appreciate the support and taking just a little bit further. And I continue to strive to make my podcast much better, but I can only do that with your help. Thank you very much. And I'm going to talk to you really soon. Thanks for the support. Thank you for listening to the Chat Club Podcast with your host, Alan Hilchey. Please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Google Play or where you download your podcasts. Be sure to check out Chat Club Podcast on Facebook and on Instagram. Remember, there is only one rule in Chat Club. Everybody talks about Chat Club. Be sure to catch our next episode.